So today I got Marshall with me and we're looking at this little uh, neon capacitor resistor matrix I made probably about oh, eight or nine years ago and you can actually hear it so every time one of those neon flashes, I don't know if they'll show up on the camera but we'll zoom in. Every time one of those neon flashes it makes a noise through the speaker. So this is the matrix close up. You can see the neons lazily firing and what this is, this is an array of capacitors, neons and resistors and later on I'll draw it on the whiteboard to show how it works. And there are no active components, all this is being done by the the neons themselves, they're acting like little little oscillators and on the scope is the voltage going at one of the, actually this is the voltage at one of the, the points on the board and every time a neon fires the voltage dips way down or a neon near it and sometimes it looks sounds like the neons are actually oscillating and they're making like little chirps and you can actually see that on the scope and then here's a close-up of it we're going to turn the lights off oh, that's good so here it is with the lights off, or the lights are down actually. And then I can speed it up. <laughs> the little chirps. And you can actually see the chirps yeah, on the scope on the too. Scope. Here, I'll get the scope in the shot here. It's like visual farting over there. And you can actually see the chirps right here on the scope. <laughs> and if I let's see if I can if I'm lucky here. Oh, there's one of the chirps right here. Let's see what it looks like. Do, 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 do. It's a 3.89 kilohertz chirp. That's pretty neat. And I think it takes a long time to acquire. And then I can speed it up more. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I wonder if you can use this for random numbers. What do you think? Wow, that is like freaky. That's kind of Atari 2600 like. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, you can see the voltage dip down and then go back up. And it's, what's interesting, it doesn't matter where on the array it fires, you can still hear it. Uh -huh. I wonder if that's a capacitive coupling through the entire network or something. Well, I would say we got some parasitics there. Yeah, <laughs> true. I like how it still like makes that beeping noise now and again. I wonder if it's certain neons that beep only or if all of them will do it. Maybe it's the white ones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> seems to be the orange ones. When one of these fired, it made that you hear it feep when this one lit up? It didn't feep that time. It's interesting how they're all centered. Maybe it's just... Does it mo that Because the orange ones don't go in these outer borders. Uh, but it got the lower uh, on threshold. Yeah. That is funny. Sounds kind of like the morning chorus, you know, EM electromagnetic kind of. Right. It makes like weird noises like that. Sounds like neurons firing. What I find interesting is how. What I find interesting is how the lit neons seem to perfectly space themselves apart. You don't really see very many firing next to each other. They always seem to be firing about approximately the same distance apart from each other. 
until the voltage goes too low and then just the orange ones come on but then they're still fairly evenly spaced. This is quite a Rube Goldberg setup. So we got the board here and it's got power wires here and here. They're going down, I got this little power supply I made. Then I got a resistance box I was using to <laughs> change the rate by just adding more resistance. And this little power supply I made it outputs about 200 volts off of 9 volts. And then there's some clip leads dangling down here. So this one's going to the scope. This one's going to the, the amplifier on my PVM that's doing the noises. And there's diodes to protect the input so we don't blow it up. There's a capacitor way down there on the floor to couple the audio. And then it's all coming from this yellow wire here. And this is connected to some of those capacitors on the back of the board, just like an arbitrary location. Uh, and that's about it for that. I just thought people would want to see that because it's a neat little project. And eventually I want to put this on, hang this on the wall and run it off a line cord. And I probably won't have a speaker on it though. I don't know, maybe I should add a little amplifier and have it make these noises if you want to turn it on and off. So if I ever finish it, I will post a follow-up video. And here's the schematic of the neon winker circuit. It's this right here in the middle. The blue circuit. Basically it's a very large array of capacitors and neons and resistors. There's no transistors or chips or anything involved. So it all started here with this one circuit here. And this is the, the simplest case. It's a single neon bulb uh, capacitor and a resistor and this is about 150 to 200 volts. So what happens with this neon is when the voltage reaches a certain point it'll ionize, break down and start conducting and glowing. So whatever voltage that is, it's typically say 90 volts, it will keep glowing down to maybe 75 volts. So this is kind of like, a, so it basically has hysteresis. It won't turn on at 75 volts, but it will turn on at 90 and it will, once it's on, it'll stay on until the voltage drops down to say 75. <clears throat> so what you get here, this is called a relaxation oscillator. So this resistor charges the capacitor and then when the voltage hits say 90 volts, this neon will conduct and then discharge the capacitor through it and it'll light up in the process and when the voltage falls too far it'll turn off and then the resistor will charge it back up again. So the waveform that this generates is a sawtooth because of the, the charging is slower than the discharging obviously because it only flashes very briefly so it looks like this. So here's the charge then the discharge like that. This is the charging, and then this is where it flashes and discharges, and it charges and discharges again. So after the first circuit, this is like the simplest case. It's a three-part oscillator, which I think is pretty cool. You can actually tap this and make and you know listen to it. Then this is the next step. This is a uh, um, two neons, one capacitor, and two resistors, and this works similar. But what ends up happening is the neons will blink back and forth. They'll go do 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 do, and the reason for that is because Let's say this neon conducts with a slightly lower voltage than this one. So as both of these charge up, or as the voltage you know, builds up, this one will conduct first. And that will bring the voltage of this node down a little. And this one will continue to um, you know, be higher than this one. So this capacitor actually will build up a charge. This will be higher voltage here than here. And then when this stops conducting, the voltage at this point will be higher, so it'll be yet higher here because it adds. And then that will cause this neon to fire, and then it'll go the other way. This end will start you know, building a charge higher than on this end, and then the teeter-totter goes the other way, and then this neon will flash, and then this will be lower than there, here, and it'll just go back and forth. And then, continuing on, here is a four neon sequential flasher. So what this one will do, this works like the dual, but this will go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And what's interesting, when you turn the power off, it'll go four, three, two, one, until all the capacitor voltages equalize. And you can extend this any number of stages, but the problem is as it gets longer and longer, um, you'll get to a point where more than one neon will light up sometimes. So I've seen this extended up to 60 stages and you have to have very carefully matched neons for this to work. And the typical value of these resistors, capacitors, at least in my case, were 
in all cases, these are 3.3 mega ohms, and the caps are 0.1 UF, and the neons are just like an NE2. And that is true for all of these resistors and capacitors. If you use these values, all of these circuits will work. So that leads us into the, the big array, which is this right here. This is an example of this is part of that array. And basically what it is, it's the, here's the resistor and the neon. And then it, for each neon, there's no less than four capacitors that connect to it. And those four capacitors work just like this, but on a 2D matrix, like on each neon here, there's only two capacitors. So each neon is connected to two capacitors. But on here, each neon is connected to four capacitors in an array. And it works very similar to, the, to these other circuits. And basically what ends up happening is there's so many neons and so many capacitors, they all interact with each other. And that's what causes like the random blinking. And I thought it was very interesting that the neons that are spaced as far apart as possible were the ones that were lighting up, probably because of the way the voltages build up on the circuit. So I'm not really sure how that works, but I thought it was really cool. So I'm thinking about making maybe a 3D version of this. This is a 2D version. This would be a 1D version. And that would, be, that would mean there'd be six capacitors connected to each neon, you know, spreading out of the, out of the board in this case multiple layers of this connected by capacitors. So I don't know if I'll do that, but it seemed really neat and it need a lot of neons. So I was using, instead of using the NE2s, I was using a very similar bulb. It's, it's very similar, only instead of having neon inside, I think it has argon in it. And I'll show a close up of those. So here's a close up of the ray. These are all, these gray things are all the capacitors. And then here's the neon. There's one neon connected and see each the four capacitors meets all in the corners here and that's how it works, that's how they're connected. And here's the back. You can see this is where we were tapping earlier to, for the audio. And then there's two resistors and then there's where all those four caps are joined. And there's a two resistor for each set. So there's like a set of two resistors, two resistors which connects to the two different things. And then these are there's like little thin routes here that run all the way from end to end. And this is what makes the array loop back around. So this is a continuous array. It does not end at the edges. It actually continues on. So there's a route that just brings it all the way back to the top. And on the top side of the board, there's routes that go from the left all the way to the right. And that's pretty much it. There's really nothing else to it. And the power enters here along these two rails. This was, I was running this at about 180 volts. And then there's, this is a wire we're using to listen in on it. Just one of the random connections. Powering it was this little circuit I had made a while back. It's just a transformer I wound by hand. A filter capacitor, there's a FED, a 5 volt regulator, and a PIC sits in here. And the PWM from the PIC modulates the voltage. There's some diodes on the back, another capacitor, and a few other minor parts. This is based on an MB3800 switch mode controller. And then we were running it to speed it up and slow it down using just a resistance box here. And we're running it 10 mega ohms is when it was flashing really slow. And then 15 uh, K ohms is when it was flashing very quickly. And then, you know, I just tweet twirling the switch here to change that. So that's that project. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like that, maybe I'll every week or two I'll post a new video on one of my old projects like this. Thanks for watching.